afternoon, everyone. I'm just going to be presenting an interesting case of a young child who presented to the emergency department with a left-sided neck swelling. So here we have the axial contrast enhanced CT scan in a soft tissue window. And just for this first slide itself, you can save the child. You can see this soft tissue filling the posterior aspect of the nasal pharynx, which is the adenoidal tissue. So as we go down, we can see that there is obvious asymmetry between the two sides. There is a lot of soft tissue on the left side when compared to the right. And there is this large low attenuation area, which appears to be the center of this. Also, if you look in the midline, posteriorly in the midline, there is a low density collection. Now, as to which space this is in, you can see this is right behind the posterior nasopharyngeal wall. So this is in the retropharyngeal region. How do you know if this is in the pre-vertebral space? If you can see clearly, you can see some soft tissue posterior to this collection, and there is a slight lobulated edge to it, and these are the longus coli muscles. So if the longus coli muscles are seen clearly without the collection extending posterior to it, it means it is limited to the retropharyngeal space and not actually going into the pre-vertebral space. So you can see that this retropharyngeal collection is extending quite low down, almost up to the level of the epiglottis, which you can see here. Any neck scan and any positive neck scan, the most important, one of the most important things that needs to be mentioned in the report is the caliber of the airway, because that is what decides on how, how much an extremist this child is. You can see in this particular patient, the airway is nice and wide and there is no actual narrowing of the airway as such. So what is this um, collection which is seen in the lateral aspect? This corresponds to the level two lymph node, which you can see here, there are lymph nodes here as well, which come and go as you go in the screen. So it is this lymph node. And most likely this is also a lymph node which has the same infection which is in the retropharyngeal space and it's a necrotic lymph node. It is surrounded by a lot of soft tissue edema. Another important thing in any neck scan, important structure to look out for are the neck vessels. So on the right, we can see the internal jugular vein and the carotid and both of them coursing down by the parotid into the neck. So if we follow the same thing on the other side, you can see the internal jugular anteriorly and the carotid posteriorly. And if we keep our cursor or an RRI onto the internal jugular vein, we lose it. As we go up, it's completely lost. So that's another important finding that you look for in any neck abnormality to see if the jugular veins are patent. This could be even because the veins are collapsible, it could be due to pressure effect, that you aren't actually seeing the vessel. But when you're seeing the contralateral side so clearly, there, there isn't any reason why there shouldn't be equal flow on the other side as well. So if you're unsure of it, we have to raise the possibility that there could be an internal jugular vein thrombosis when we can't see it clearly. So the next important thing in any retropharyngeal abscess, we've already discussed that there is no pre-vertebral collection in this particular patient, but we also need to look at the bones and see if there is any abnormality within the bones. And there are no abnormalities within the bones in this patient. So in conclusion, this is a child with a retropharyngeal abscess along with a left-sided level two necrotic lymph node with a normal caliber airway and a possible left internal jugular vein thrombosis. 